So someone has asked a few questions for me to answer and I thought they were interesting. So I'm going to start. What's your favorite book? Um, I don't have a favorite book, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, I like to read like really extensive, thick <laughs> books because I think they have a lot of information usually. And that's what I'm after. So I, I often read non-fiction or pretty much only non-fiction. I mean, I have a lot of books here. Um, so, yeah, I like to be aware of history, and I like to be aware of how things occurred, and why, and when, and with whom, um, what to follow, those uh, things, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think it's important to know history. That's why I have a huge history book here, I have more. Um, I like to read a lot about religion, which kind of weird since I'm an atheist. I mean, I'm an atheist because I read a lot about religion too. Um, I, I'm very much interested in everything. I mean, I can go from biology to religion to zoology to chemistry to physics to anything. Um, so, yeah, I read mostly um, non-fiction, and, yep, and I don't really have a favorite book, I think. What's your favorite fictional character? My favorite fictional character is, without a doubt, the god of INTPs, our lord and savior, L, from Death Note. Um, the reason for it, the reasons for it are quite obvious, I mean, L is pretty much the ultimate INTP. <laughs> It's like an INTP in its peak form. Um, extremely intelligent, extremely measured. He, he knows um, how to think, how to make logical progresses. Um, so, yeah, I think he's, he's the peak form of an INTP, is what an INTP yeah, aspires to be. Are you into fictional fantasies or realistic topics? Um, I think about fiction all the time, so... I mean, I can, I can do it right now. I am doing it right now, actually. So, yeah, or realistic topics. I think about reality, and when I'm bored, I use fiction. <laughs> so, or fantasy, let's say. Um, yeah, I, I like to think about reality. Maybe more than speculating about fiction. Um, because I think it's more important, in a way. Um, I like to think about how things could be, obviously, but I think it's also very important to see how things are at the moment, so that you can create the things that should be or that could be. Um, so, yeah, I think I think a lot of, about, or more about, reality than fiction, although I do that all the time, fiction. How is your process of imagination and how do you deal with illogical topics? Um, I don't know. I don't have a process of imagination, I guess. It's just... I think about stuff and that's it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a process to think about... I mean, I do have a process to think about things, but that's only when I'm being thorough, which is all the time. But it's... When I want to be very thorough, then sure, I I have several steps. You can always call, you can almost call it filters to make sure that my position is strong enough to be hold. Um, first, you start with the premise, obviously. Like let's begin. Um, I don't know. God exists. Okay, a positive premise. Um, you can, one of the ways of doing it, I think, is analyzing the premise in itself, the way that things, the arguments used in favor, the arguments used against, are there any fallacies in here? Possibly. Um, paradoxes, uh, problems in history, problems of contradictions, problems in the texts, 
problems in argumentation, logical fallacies. You you have many <clears throat> many topics to or many filters, I guess, that you have to put in your mind to make sure that the position that you are holding is rational and that can withstand criticism or that can be destroyed by criticism, which, which is actually what I do all the time when with positions that I hold, to make sure that they hold. I read more about positions against mine than I read about positions in favor because I can think about positions in favor all I want. It's a, it's if I'm wrong or not that I want to know. So I read about opposite positions all the time more than um, positions in favor. Um, one example is how many religious books I have in my table. I am not religious at all. I am an anti-theist, actually. And this is one of the reasons I read all of these books and I come to my conclusions. And I could talk more about it. Maybe I will one day when I'm bored. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, there are many steps to, I think reaching a logical conclusion you have to analyze the premises you have to analyze it's i think it's very important that like people should study logical fallacies really because it puts limits to your thinking because if you live in a world where thought is completely free or where there's really no filter again to mediate what is reasonable to believe what it's not, what it's contradictory, what it's not. Um, and there are many positions that people hold that seem logical at first, but if you look to it a bit more thoroughly, you can realize that there are a lot of problems with it, with them. So that's how I think. I don't, I usually don't speak of absolute. I don't like to do it. I feel very uncomfortable actually in speaking of absolutes, of things that are and aren't, or are not. Um, I prefer to say things like, I think this is how things happen, or I think this is how it is. Um, not just to, um, for my own intellectual safety, of not having someone saying, I told you, you said that this is 100% true, and now you're wrong. That's one of the reasons why I only give like 99% certainty on something and never 100%. Not even on topics that I know a lot of about. Um, because I think it's important to not speak in absolutes since humans don't know everything. And there are there's always information that is missing to you. No matter how much you read, no matter how much you know. So I think it's also it's very important to not give absolute certainties of especially on metaphysical topics i think it's very important not to fall for that trap to withstand judgment until evidence is superior how do you deal with illogical topics um i face them <laughs> head first um i there are there are many There are a few things that can annoy me, not a lot of them, not many of them. I mean, I'm usually a very measured, calm person, um, almost bordering cold. <laughs> so uh, there are not many things that can actually annoy me to the point of stress, let's say. That's why I can probably sleep the entire afternoon before an exam, because I don't care really <laughs> and yeah I usually get along well so it's fine um, so how do you deal with illogical topics um, if I have been debating people on topics like politics religion and um, sometimes history for a long time for like religion maybe for like 10 years almost so I've heard a lot of things um, I've heard probably all the best arguments um, of almost, at least, Christianity and Islam, I think. I have read their books, I have read um, 
about I have read books of their theologians, I have um, read their philosophies, I have analyzed it the best I can, I have read and heard arguments in favor and against. So I am more or less confident in making a judgment on religion, on politics too. I mean, I have been very interested in politics since I was a kid, so I know a few things, I guess. So um, how do I deal with illogical topics? I mean, I, probably logical people would be better, would be a better question. I mean, it really depends on the person, it depends on the topic, depends on my patience too, depends on how important it is to make this person understand um, the fallacy in their reasoning. I mean, if this person is not important enough, maybe I won't try as hard. If I don't really care about the topic, then I won't try as hard. If I'm tired or if I just don't care about the... Uh, um, a discussion that I won't try as hard. Um, I usually face people with that I think have either illogical um, opinions or that reach to conclusions that can be dangerous or that I can consider dangerous. So I don't shy away from a f an intellectual fight, let's say. Um, so yeah, I, I usually give them my arguments in a calm, measured way, they usually respond in a less calm and less measured way. I mean, let the best argument win <laughs> in the end. Um, I don't know. There are a few things that I think that people that make an effort to use logic, like I do, by studying philosophy, by studying the other person's argument. <laughs> Sometimes I know the arguments better than they do. Um, there's a bit of a disadvantage, I guess, sometimes. That is, some people don't care about what is logical or about what is reasonable, and they are willing to tell you almost that directly. And they are willing to withstand a position that cannot be maintained anymore sometimes um, and this is a problem because if you are trying to reason with someone that won't be reasoned with then you are speaking two different languages and that person will not care either way so it's kind of a lost cause sometimes I guess and I'm rambling too much <laughs> so always getting lost in your mind like to an INTP well you kind of just witnessed that um, I, I mean I don't know, I start with a point and I quickly diverge into this leads to this and this leads to this and this leads to five. I mean, one point always leads to the other and the other always leads to three more and five more and twenty more and then you have like an entire afternoon to think about nonsense. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's how I, how I think usually about stuff. I create, like, um, how do you call it? I pinpoint my points, or I don't know, I make a line in my points, and it's like one leads to three, and to five, and to twenty. So, yeah, and soon you have as many topics and subtopics to think about for the entire afternoon. So, yeah, I think that's how I think. So those were a few things that were asked to me, and yeah, I guess that's it.